Hi, I'm Billy Penn for 300guitars.com and right now we're going to mount Cluson tuners on this Stratocaster replacement neck. This is a good DIY type of segment. First thing we're going to do is we're going to press in these bushings. These are just regular press in bushings that you get with the Cluson type. These are actually Goto machines. See, they're just they're going to be a little bit tight each one. So what I like to do is take my reamer and chamfer the hole just a little tiny bit just so the hole isn't perfectly drilled like this I'm gonna open it up just a little so it's angled I mean I'm exaggerating with my hands but it's gonna be a little uh, angled like this chamfered at the top more so right at the top just so this goes in a little bit better if you chamfer it too much and the hole uh, the hole in the headstock the whole thing is shaped like this your bushing is going to actually sit on the, in the headstock and lean forward, which is what you don't want. You just want to open up this top so you don't crack the lacquer and uh, the bushing goes in a lot easier. And I'm going to show you how we're going to press it in with some simple tools. We have nothing, uh, no crazy uh, esoteric tools, just basically basic hand tools that you'll have around your home. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to chamfer. I'm going to take my reamer and we're just going to do a little... It looks like I'm turning a lot, but I'm going very, very slow. Just turn that a little bit. See, and now this should drop in just a little, see? It drops in probably what? Maybe a sixteenth, probably even a little bit less, just to open up that front just a little tiny bit. Again, A string. See, and a lot of this I do by feel. I've done it so many times. See, and that drops, that actually could, that's about right. D string. That's about right as well. G. That's about right too. That's just a little tight. You know what? We'll just go a little bit tiny, a little bit more. I'm not using a whole lot of downward pressure. I'm going very uh, gentle on the downward pressure or the inward pressure. And I'm, I'm turning a lot so I don't crack the lacquer, so I don't chip the wood and it just, it just makes it smoother and it goes nice and slow. One. That actually could be opened up just a little tiny more. Great. Okay, that's that. Let's grab my little paintbrush here. A nice soft camel hair paintbrush. Get rid of some of this dust. All right, and back to work. Okay, we're going to drop in this first bushing. What I like to do is one at a time. I don't line them all up. I press it in with my fingers as much as I can. It's just barely started. And the method that I use, that I've actually used for a long time, is I, use, I actually use a pair of pliers. Regular old channel locks, you can get them anywhere. This happens to be fiberboard. It's actually fiberboard circuit board material. I guess they call it circuit card or fish paper used like in, in uh, vintage type uh, guitar amps uh, you know, like re repros of tweed amps or blackface amps or something like that. Tag board, uh, whatever you want to call it. And this is what the eyelets go on. It's really tough, it's pretty dense and it disperses any of the pressure uh, from the pliers. And what I do is I take this big piece and I'll just put it in the back of the headstock anywhere just to protect you know, where I'm going to put my pliers. I have a double layer here that glued two pieces together and I put it over the top. It just makes it a little bit better on the top. And then be very, very careful, very careful of the finish here and just apply some downward pressure. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. They go in nice and smooth and they seat flat. I don't need an arbor press. I don't need to set anything 
anything up else in the shop. And that's the first one. They go in really smooth. Go with A string right here. Same thing. Really careful of the finish. And like I said, this goes right in very smoothly and you can press it down flush. It doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. And I can just keep moving right on down the line here. Okay, D string. Just be careful of that finish. That's the most important thing. Great. Okay. Halfway home. Once again, okay, B string. Doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. And then last, little E. Careful of that lacquer. Lacquered this neck myself, so I don't want to have myself a setback or, a, or another finish repair that I'd have to do. And that's it. All our bushings are in. They're seated flat. They're nice and tight. They're not loose. They're not leaning. You can see the angle, how flat they are, nice and flush. And now we're ready to mount up those tuners. My next step, what I like to do is drop in the tuners. <clears throat> Obviously, the uh, they're all the same except for low E and high E, which can only go in one spot. Then I take out my handy dandy straight edge here. I'll make these all as straight as I can. You can see some vintage guitars; they're pretty straight. Some of them have a, a few tuners that are a little bit, a little crooked, just a little tiny bit. Then I have a little tool here. I have a dowel rod with a bent pin. This is actually from a high school biology kit. Never used on a patient <laughs> or, or a, a dissection, only for guitars. I've had it forever, and it just works for me. What I like to do is right now is I like to make a little impression in the neck where the screw holes are going to be. You can use a pin. You can use a drill bit. You can use whatever's, whatever you have or whatever's comfortable for you. I've just been using this so long, and it works for me. Just have to make a little tiny impression in the lacquer. In the next step, you'll see how that's all going to work out. All right, done with the straight edge. Pull your tuners. Watch that nice lacquer job. You can't even see those dots, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my pencil. Now I can kind of see where they are, and I'm just going to make little dots so I can see them a little bit better. The next step, you could go right into drilling if you wanted to. But what I like to do is I have another tool I made. Actually, this isn't from my biology kit. <laughs> it's a piece of dowel rod with a really small, I don't remember the size, probably uh, in the 64ths. I think it might be a uh, maybe 1 16th or a 5 64th drill bit, if I remember correctly, that I made up. And I'm just going to start the drilling process by hand here, just a little bit. You can use a small Phillips, like a jeweler screwdriver. You can use a drill bit in your hand. Um, you can actually go right to drilling if you feel comfortable. I like to have just a little bit more of a start because I don't want to goof up my lacquer job or anything. And that's the start. That's uh, up to this point.